Ah, don't touch that dial. Listen to... <laughs> yes, folks, it's another half hour of fun with Blondie and Dagwood, with Arthur Lake as Dagwood, Ann Rutherford as Blondie, and Hanley Stafford as Mr. Dithers. <laughs> Blondie and Dagwood in just a minute, but first a word from the Ford dealers of America. Again for 1950, Ford has won the Fashion Academy Gold Medal Award as Fashion Car of the Year. Listen to what Mr. George I. Hutchings, a fireman from Des Moines, Iowa, one of the more than 230,000 happy owners, said about his 50 Ford. I was surprised a low-priced car could have the room and beauty inside that my 50 Ford has. I was expecting that only the most expensive cars would have that much space and would look as rich. With the style on the inside equal to that on the outside, I can see now why my friends told me to get a new Ford. The smooth power and pep of that V8 engine and the comfort of driving my 50 Ford makes me the proudest car owner in town. Comments like that are heard every day by Ford dealers. But we want you to prove for yourself that the new 1950 Ford is the one truly fine car in its field. The classified phone directory will give you the name of your nearest Ford dealer. Or perhaps you know him personally. Call him tomorrow and ask for a test drive in the new 1950 Ford. Feel its comfort. Hear the purr of its mighty V8 or 95 horsepower 6. See its many big car features. Yes, see, hear, and feel the difference yourself. Test drive the new 1950 Ford tomorrow. And now for our weekly visit with your neighbors, the Bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue. Well, it's about 6 o'clock in the evening in the Bumstead household. Dagwood has just come home from the office, has taken his usual dive for the couch, and is lying there all unraveled as Blondie tells him what happened during the day. And then at 4 o'clock, Alexander's school teacher, Miss Ellerby, called yeah, up. Yeah, and she said she was keeping Alexander after school. And said that she was keeping... How did you know? <laughs> well, uh, last night, Alexander got me to teach him my good old one-two punch. <laughs> You're encouraging him to fight, Dagwood. Oh, oh, shame on you. Oh, no, I'm not. But I'll bet he's passing out of a few black eyes that he owes to a few of his friends on his way home. <laughs> I wish I was young again. Boy, would I get into trouble. <laughs> well, I don't think he's been fighting. Well, he's a bumstead, and I'll bet he's been fighting. What do you bet? Mm, well, I'll bet. Mm, okay, if he hasn't been fighting, I'll do the dishes tonight. Now, if he has been fighting, you've got to take care of the furnace. How it's about that? It's a bet. Mm-hmm. And that includes going down to look at it at five in the morning. Well, that's a hard bargain, but okay. <laughs> Am I going to enjoy kicking you out of bed at five o'clock in the morning? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I'll see who it is, dear. Yeah, okay. I'll just curl up here on the couch and rest my eyes a little bit. Why, hello, Miss Ellerby. Well, come right in. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Thumstead? Thank you. <laughs> oh, my, this room is so homey. Those beautiful curtains, the lovely furniture, the rugs, and... Oh, this cute dog sleeping on the couch. Hey, cut it out, huh? Ah, you're tickling. Hey, oh. get your hands off me. Now, oh. It's not a dog, it's a man. <laughs> yes, Miss Ellerby. Yes. Uh, this is my husband. How do you do, Mr. Bunstead? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, you know, lying there with your tan suit on, mm. looking at me with those big brown eyes, uh, I was sure you were a great day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help scratching your ear. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Bumstead. There's just such a resemblance. Yeah, oh, thanks. Uh, Miss Ellerby, you usually come to see us when something's wrong with Alexander's schoolwork. I hope it's not that tonight. Uh, Mrs. Bumstead, au contraire. Yeah, I... Uh, huh? I said au contraire. That's French for heck no. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, uh, I wonder if Alexander is told you about his desire to be an actor. Oh, yes. You see, at school, we're having a little dramatic offering. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. If this offering is like the last dramatic offering, uh, we'd be smart to refuse it. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Bumstead, uh, Alexander has a brilliant talent. I don't think I'm overestimating his acting ability when I say he'll captivate his audience and lay him in the aisles. Uh, oh, oh that, that's nice. Alexander, an actor? 
Do you really think he has talent? Oh, yes. I definitely feel the kid has a lot on the ball. <laughs> hey, what, what do you teach, Miss Ellerby? English, of course. <laughs> and the drama. <laughs> yes, you can't tell, you know. Alexander might grow up to be another Clark Gable. <gasps> oh. <laughs> or Van Johnson. <gasps> or Montgomery Clift. Oh, I mustn't do this to myself. <laughs> about this, Miss Ellaby. Oh, I... Mr. Bumstead, it's a very interesting profession. Mm. The good actors make as much as two or three thousand a week. And that ain't hay. <laughs> Did you say ain't? Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It just slipped out. Mm, yeah. yeah. What would the school board say if they knew you now said ain't? Mr. Would. Bumstead, I, I yeah. hope, I hope you'll keep my little grammatical slip uh, strictly entre nous. Uh, entre nous? That's French for under your hat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, sure. Now, you won't discourage Alexander in his acting aspirations, will you? No, no, we won't say anything for a while, at least. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, I really must be running along, and thank you again so much. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, Miss Ellerby. Uh, au revoir. Yeah, Ford Coupe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Bumstead, I still say you'd make a wonderful great day. <laughs> That's a fine English teacher. Yes. Now, there, there, dear. I don't think you look like a great Dane. Mm -hmm. Only a little bit around your muzzle. I, I mean, your mouth. Oh, Grandy. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking, dear. Oh, I think I just heard the back door. Mm -hmm. That must be Alexander. Oh, is that you, Alexander? Yes, it is I. <laughs> Alexander, what have you been doing? Oh, good evening, Peter. Huh? <laughs> Good evening, Mater. Jeepers! I'm so sorry I was delayed. Oh, it's a splendid evening this evening. And this, Pa? Yeah, what kind of talk is that? <laughs> Alexander, is that you? It always has been. Been? <laughs> well, look, look, Alexander, look, look, let's forget all that stuff. Uh, look, uh, have you been fighting today? Oh, perish the thought. Ridiculous. It no, no, look, just answer yes or no, that's all. Yes or no. No, Peter. Hey, what is this Peter business? What is this? Oh, don't you know, old chap? That's British for Latin for my old man. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander, okay, look, now what goes on here? Wait a minute, Dagwood. I know. It's what Miss Ellerby said. You mean that I look like a great Dane? No. Yeah. Oh. That no. Alexander might be a great actor. Oh. He's being an actor. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, I get it now, yeah. Well, Alexander, you just don't talk like yourself. Yeah, and you don't act like a real bumstead either. Well, I doubt if I ever shall again. I'm thinking of changing my name. Y Alexander. Yes, Peter? Y and don't call me Peter. I'll call you Potato. <laughs> oh, very well, sir. Very what well. do you mean you're thinking of changing your name? Well, Mater, I think what your father said about Peter goes double for Mater. <laughs> now, what's wrong with your name, please? Well, it doesn't have any dignity. Y what's the matter with Bumstead? Bumstead, Bumstead, Bumstead. It sounds like a man falling down the stairs. <laughs> and what name were you thinking of? Well, how about Alexander Barrymore? <laughs> of course, it would only be my stage name. Hmm. Our stage, my name would be Alexander Gable. Yeah. <laughs> it's lucky my girl's name is Sylvia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, see, Dagwood, he does want to be an actor. Oh, no, 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 not that, please. Yes. I can't decide whether to be an actor and be famous or be a ham and make money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a decision. To be or not to be, that is the question. A Hamlet, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, I, I played Hamlet once myself. Mm -hmm. I walked on the stage in tights and the audience laughed, and then I bent over and they split. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I read my line. Parting is such sweet sorrow... And my pants came down with the curtain. <laughs> Dagwood. Yeah. Now tell us all about this, Alexander. Oh, it's really nothing, except that you're looking at the star of the school play. Oh, my. Miss Ellerby and I decided that I was the most talented actor in our school. Mm. And about my fighting, Pop. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. I mm. won't be in any more fights. Huh? I wouldn't dare take a chance of marring my classic features. Mm. <laughs> you 
may not be an actor, but you're already a ham. <laughs> More like his father every day. Well, I've got to go upstairs for a moment now. I wish to see if I can put a little romantic wave into my hair. Uh, tell me when dinner is. Oh, holy smoke. <laughs> Our son, an actor. My, you'd think he was a star already. Mm. I've never seen him put on such airs. And if he turns out to be good in the play, <laughs> he probably won't even speak to yeah, us. Yeah, imagine Alexander Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just have to see what happens. Mm. But don't you forget now, tonight you wash the dinner dishes. And yeah. be sure you don't break any. Yeah, what are you going to do, Blondie? I want to do what you usually do. Oh, you do, huh? Well, let's see. <laughs> Well, I sit in a big chair with my paper and get real comfortable and loosen my suspenders and uh, you can do the best you can. <laughs> It's wonderful with Dagwood doing the dishes. If I can make some more bets like that, life is going to be very simple. Woo! Oh, no. <laughs> well, life will be simple, but we'll be eating off paper plates. Dagwood! <laughs> Well, that was your fault. No, it wasn't. You shouldn't buy such slippery soap. <laughs> Dishes are leaping out of my hands all by themselves. Well, what did you break? Uh, well, you know that gravy boat? Yes. Well, no one will ever sail in it again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a complete shipwreck. Uh, well, that's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, dear, you look very cute in that little apron of mine with the pink ruffles. Yeah, now, now, stop that. <laughs> Oh, may I powder your little nose? Mm. You cut that out! <laughs> when my nose needs powdering, I'll powder it myself in the powder room. Oh, no, no. no. Uh, dear, I'd like to see you wear that apron every night when you wash the dishes. Oh, mm. hey, Pop. Hey, Mom. I mean, oh, Father. Oh, Mother, dear. Yeah, yeah. What is it? I've been thinking about... Holy smoke. Pop's wearing an apron. Yes, he's doing the dishes. Gee, Pop, you look just like a girl. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a uh, Great Dane. <laughs> well, I just wanted to tell you that I've decided not to change my name to Barrymore. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, how does this sound? Alexander Boyer. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, <laughs> oh, but Jays, you must come with me to the Casbah. <laughs> Ah, oh, Hedy, we will forget the wood in the Casbah. <laughs> How's that? Bar. Now go on upstairs and get after your studies, Alexander. And, and that doesn't include making faces at yourself in the mirror either. Very well, Father dear. Yeah. And don't call me Father dear. Call me Pop dear. Well, whatever you say, sir. Oh, by the way, Mom. Yes, Alexander. Tomorrow morning, I think I'll have breakfast in bed. A tea bags and crimpets, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good night, ham bone. <laughs> oh, boy, it's midnight. I'll try my new character out of Mom and Pop. I'll talk it in this wastebasket so it'll make my voice sound hollow and gruesome. Oh, boy, they're down to sleep. I hide down at the foot of the bed where they can't see me. There. Well, here it goes. Uh, what did you say, Blondie? Uh, Hey, what, what, what's that? What's that? What was what, Dad? Yes, I, I heard something awful. It was probably a mouse. Yeah, it sounded more like a moose. <laughs> oh, nonsense. You probably woke yourself up with your own snoring. Yeah, well, I don't snore that loud. 
Yes, you do. I've had to tell our neighbors that you're testing a foghorn for Point Magoo. Yeah. <laughs> you're dreaming, dear. If I'm dreaming, and it sure is a gruesome dreaming. Dagwood, what was that? Yeah, well, I happen to ask you first. It, it all, all I know is that I'm scared silly. Well, t- turn on the light. I'd rather not. But somebody... Or something is in the room. That's why I don't want to turn on the light. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd rather not see it, Blondie. Well, I'm going to turn on the light. Dagwood, uh, do you see anything? Uh, Dagwood, do you see anything? Uh, how can I? I've got my head under the covers. <laughs> well, I don't see anybody. Guess it must be just our imagination. Well, I'll turn the light off and let's get back to sleep. You cannot escape your doom. Oh, that's it. it? (laughs) Who's there? Evil spirit of Kaloon. Your doom is here. Get down on your knees and say your pajamas. I mean, say your prayers. Alexander (laughs) Bumstead. No, I'm Alexander (laughs) Karloff. Alexander (laughs) Bumstead. Where's that light switch? Well, how'd you like that bit of acting? Oh, Dagwood, I want you to take Alexander into his room and give him a... Dagwood? Dagwood? Alexander, look what you've done to your father. He's fainted. Get some water. Gosh, what a tribute to my acting ability. I laid him in the aisle. our story in just a moment, but first, here's a message from the Ford dealers of America. More than 230,000 happy owners agree it makes sense to drive the 1950 Ford before you buy any car at any price. And your local Ford dealer invites you to test drive this great new car in your own way. Yes, get behind the wheel of the new Ford, which again for 50 has won the Fashion Academy Award as America's fashion car of the year. Touch the starter and thrill to the instant response of the mighty Ford engine that whispers power. Now take this 50 Ford out into traffic and notice how completely easy it is to handle. Then to the open road and feel the big car stability, the solid comfort of Ford's famous midship ride. Then glide to a smooth, even stop with Ford's king-size brakes. You'll agree that in every way, here is the one truly fine car in its field. So call your nearest Ford dealer tomorrow. He'll be delighted to arrange a test drive in the new 100-horsepower V8 or its companion in quality, the 95-horsepower 6. See, hear, and feel the difference by test driving the new 1950 Ford. Well, after what happened last night, Dagwood didn't get back to sleep for a while, and consequently, he overslept this morning. He's a little late, and he's uh, had to whiz out the door to top speed. Hey, goodbye, Dagwood. Yes. Goodbye. Well, it's almost nine o'clock, and he's not here yet. This morning, he's going to be late for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Nine. Well, there's eight, but where's nine? Come on, you crooked clock. <laughs> Strike nine or I'll take you apart and give you the works. I made it. There. <laughs> Bumstead. What? Um... Why is it that clock always waits for you? Oh, that's very simple, Mr. Did it? I run very fast. <laughs> and according to Einstein... Time approaches zero when the velocity of a mass approaches the speed of light. Well, you're a mass, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Gittes, oh, uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, Blondie wanted me to, to uh, discuss a little something with you this morning. My answer is no, it, if it's about a raise. Uh, no, 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 it isn't about a raise. Oh, well, in that case, it, just uh, sit down and rest your brain. Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, I uh, have a problem. Well, what's unusual about that? I got a problem, too. I've been married to it for 24 years. No, no. This is about Alexander. (laughs) You know, he wants to be an actor. You know, I was an actor when I was a boy. Yeah? The romantic type, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Women used to swoon when I'd quiver my nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, Mr. Githers, did you know Shakespeare? Why, certainly. <laughs> out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard a no a more. Ah. Do I know Shakespeare? Yeah. Yeah, I, but I, I meant, did you know him personally? Bum said Shakespeare ah. died in 1616. Oh, excuse me. That's before your time, I guess, yeah. I was very small, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, I was a wonderful actor. But it wasn't easy for me. Yeah, it sounds like it wasn't easy for the audience either. <laughs> uh, Mr. Giddies, uh, what was your most difficult role? Trying to make ten the hard way. <laughs> oh! You mean acting? Yeah. Oh, well, get this. Ah, darling. Come with me to the Casbah. <laughs> you love me. So kiss me. Mr. Dillard, I didn't know you cared. Ha! <laughs> Bum said. Now, who did that sound like? Yeah, it sounded a little bit like Alexander then. <laughs> hey, Mr. Dillard, look, now, please, uh, couldn't you just come over home with me tonight and give Alexander a little fatherly advice? Well, what's wrong with you? Yeah, well, you know how kids are. They don't pay any attention to what their parents tell them, but they'll listen to the first strip that comes along. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, they, yeah, I mean the first dope. Uh, no, no, the... the well, some, they'll... Uh, Please, never mind the apologies. Yeah, well, anyway, you could uh, tell him about the disadvantages of being an actor, couldn't you? Disadvantages? Yeah. Well, actors make a lot of money and have to make love to beautiful women and have big homes with swimming pools. Mm -hmm. Have to make love to beautiful women and... Uh, uh, what are the disadvantages? <laughs> no, please, Mr. Dennis, you will talk to Alexander tonight now, won't you? Uh, what are you having for dinner? Uh, roast prime ribs of beef with mashed potatoes and gravy. I'd be delighted. Di mm -hmm. Hello, dear. Hello, uh, Mr. Dennis. Uh, hi, honey. Hello, Bundy. Pick it, Mr. Dennis. Well, well. So this is the vest pocket, James Mason. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dithers, I'd like to have a little talk with you. You might at least wait until I ask you first. Well, we'll be out in the kitchen. Come on, Dad. No, I think I'd rather... Dad, Good night. Alexander, I understand that That's you... That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Dithers. You're a man of the world, aren't you? Well, I've been around, if that's what you mean. You catch on. You see, as an actor... I may have to play that I'm sort of devil-may-care type. You know, a, a world with the girls. I thought you might be able to give me a few pointers. Alexander, you come to the right man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the first approach, J.C.? Well, first you... J.C. I mean, Mr. Dithers. Uh -huh, that's better. Well, first you flatter the girl. If she's beautiful, tell her she's the most beautiful thing you ever saw. Tell her that compared to her, Ava Gardner looks like Gravel Gertie. Well, what do you do about homely girls? You avoid them. <laughs> Is that all? Is that all? I could go on on the subject for women for three or four hours. Well, well go on, Mr. Dithers, go on. Well, now, suppose you have a pretty secretary, and there she is, taking dictation. You two through talking yet? Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Githers, did you give Alexander some uh, fatherly advice? Uh, uh, oh, well, 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 yes, yes. Uh, let's just call it advice. Yeah. Uh, come in. Where's Alexander now? Oh, he's just calling up Little Skirt. Uh, that girl he knows. Can I talk to Sylvia, Mrs. Gibson? Thank you. Did you talk him out of wanting to be an actor? Well, uh, uh, you see, I... Well, well go ahead. Uh, what, what were you talking about? Uh, Sylvia... What? Hello, Sylvia. This is Alexander. How are you, you gorgeous hunk of plunder? <laughs> gorgeous hunk of plunder? Yeah, but what kind of talk is that? Well, I better be running along now. Well, certainly you are. Why, Sylvia, you make Ava Garner look like Gravel Gertie. 
Boy, Mr. Dithers, has she ever eaten a duck? Well, I, I better be running along now. Listen, Luscious, if you're a good girl, I'm going to give you a break. Why don't you carry my books to school tomorrow? <laughs> you heard me. And wait outside so I won't have to ring your bell, see? <laughs> what if it is cold? It'll do you good. So long, baby! <laughs> See you later, fellas. Yeah. Mr. Dither. Yeah, well, what kind of fatherly advice was that? <laughs> well, I guess Alexander ought to be back home from school any minute now, huh? Dagwood, well, I don't mind Alexander becoming an actor later, but first he's got to live like a normal growing boy. We've just got to get this stage struck business out of his head. It's almost impossible now. Wait a minute. I think I've got a daggy. Right. We'll do a little acting ourselves. Uh, what, what do you mean, Blondie? Well, when he comes home, mm. you can play a hard-boiled character like like Humphrey Bogart or Alan Ladd or Burt Lancaster. Hey, hey, hey I'd like that. And mm -hmm. I'll be a hard-boiled wife. Mm. We'll show him how much fun it is to have someone acting different parts at home well, all the time. Well, can you do it, dear? Well, I can try. Of course, I'm afraid it's going to be a traumatic experience for him, but it's all for the best. Oh, Mother, dear. Oh, Father. Wait, and let him come in here. Yeah, and, and then we'll let him have it. Yeah. Oh, there you are, Dagwood. Yeah, it don't call me Dagwood, she. If you call me that again, it's going to be just too bad for you, shorty. Hey, what's the matter with Father, Mother? How'd I know what's the matter with your old man? Now, look here, Alexander. We don't like the way you talk, see? You sound like a sissy, see? <laughs> Who doesn't like the way I talk? Me and Bummy here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not a thing. None of that panty waist talk or we'll fan your pants with a baseball bat, see? Uh, holy smoke. Hey, what's the matter? What's wrong? Then it's going to be just too bad for you if you threw your coat on the floor in the hallway. Hey, come on. Let's go take a gander and see if he did it, Bummy. Okay, baby. <laughs> I brought someone home with me. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Bumstead. Yeah. Who's this gorgeous dame here? Come here, you beautiful hunk of junk. Oh, bite you on the neck. Right, leave it. Get me out of here. Oh, holy smoke. That was Miss Ellaby. Oh, my. What did I say, Brian? Oh, Dad, well, she you scared her out of the house. Oh, yeah. What will she think of us now? Well, I don't know what to think of you myself. Oh, yes. I just came home to tell you that I decided to give up acting. Yeah, well, I didn't... Well, why didn't you tell us that before? Well, you see, they're starting a special gym course in judo, mm. and I can't act in the play and take the judo stuff, too. Oh, well, oh. that's a relief, Alexander. Yeah, it certainly is. It's more like it, son. I, You know, I like to have you learning a few de self-defense tricks. What sort of tricks are they teaching you, dear? Well, here's one, Mom. I slip behind Pop like this, mm -hmm. crouch down, grab his coattails, and pull! Right there! Oh, that's how I did Wow! <laughs> now, word from the Ford Dealers of America. If it's a new truck you're looking for, your Ford dealer has big news for you. Ford truck prices have just been reduced. That's right, price reductions up to $80. These reductions are made possible by engineering advances and improved production methods. Ford trucks at these new reduced prices have all the extra value features that made Ford America's number one truck value. The industry's only choice of V8 or 6, the million-dollar cab, bonus-built construction. 21 smart advancements that give you more performance at less cost. Stop in at your Ford dealers today. See Ford trucks for 50 at the new reduced prices. Remember, Ford trucks cost less because Ford trucks last longer. Latest available registrations prove it. Listen to Blondie next week over many of these same ABC stations. Yeah, we're a little late tonight, folks, so good night, everybody. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.